I always felt like the difference between the United States and the Russian space programs could be summed up by the toilet because it was indicative of what a lot of the differences were. I'm Mike Massimino, and this is how hygiene is different in space. Hygiene in space is very important. You're gonna to have to do the same sort of things that you do on Earth, like brushing your teeth and keeping yourself clean, using the bathroom. All of these things are very important and very different because you're doing them in space. So they do require some training and you wanna do it correctly because if you don't, it could lead to trouble. On Earth, we deal with flush toilets, if that's available hopefully to you. You do what you need to do and then you clean yourself up and then it's on to the remainder of your day. But in space, it's different. The flights that I had in space were on the space shuttle. And on the space shuttle, we had a lavatory. It was called the WCS, the Waste Containment System. I think that was primarily because if he had a problem, you didn't want to call Houston, we have a problem, we messed up the toilet. It didn't have a lot of privacy, but it had some. It had a privacy curtain. And the WCS had a hose for urine, for you to urinate into, and a commode, more or less, for you to poop into. And we want to use the word poop? What do we want to? Poop's okay, we're not gonna offend anyone around the planet here? Okay, taking a pee on the space shuttle was, was pretty, pretty quick and easy. The hose came with an attachment that you would put on, which was a funnel. So everyone had their own, we didn't share funnels, and it was in a little compartment, and you'd open up the compartment, and there would be the seven funnels, and you would take the appropriate one and attach it to the urine collection hose, and then you would turn the system on. What it does is it creates a little airflow so that uh, it'll take the liquid down the hose and into the tank. And when that tank reached a level that it was full, we would do a urine dump out into space. It would kind of crystallize and disappear more or less in the vacuum of space. So it was okay to dump, to dump urine out there. If the sun was shining, it would shine through the dumped urine and you'd see kind of like a rainbow effect. And that was kind of cool. And when you were finished, you would then turn off the system. You would remove your funnel, you would clean it, and you would put it back in its appropriate space. Then you would clean up a little bit. The quickest way to do that was just use a wet wipe. We had hand sanitizer, you could use some of that, because you don't want to spread any germs or anything like that. You want to be very cautious. After you get a little experience, uh, you could do other things like peeing upside down. This was a challenge given to me by a, a more experienced astronaut who said it is possible to pee upside down, you should try it, and you can. You just flip yourself upside down. You need to be a little more careful. You don't want to do that on day one. You know, you don't want to hot dog it too much, but it is possible to pee upside down, which is kind of cool. I've done that as well. Peeing on the space station is a little bit different than what we had on the space shuttle. You still pee into a hose, but unlike these individual funnels, it's a big yellow funnel and one size fits all. But on the space station, they recycle the urine. Along with recycling, sweat, and condensation, all that water is collected, and then it is cleaned, and it is treated, and it is reused. So as my friend Don Pettit says, today's coffee is tomorrow's coffee. Pooping in space was very involved because you really didn't want to mess this up. This is our orbital outhouse right here. I'll show you. But you see it's pretty small, so you have to have pretty good aim. The key to this, the way it was explained to us, and I agree, the key to this is alignment. Next to our real shuttle toilet in the simulator, we had a practice toilet that was not for defecating. It was made for alignment practice. This is actually one of NASA's deepest, darkest secrets that we're going over here. They had this camera pointing up at you. When you sat on this, you had a closed circuit TV right here. So you would see on the camera whether or not you were aligned with the target area. You would sit on there like you would on maybe on a, like you think you're on a regular on a regular toilet and, you, and then you check your alignment like, whoa, I'm nowhere near where I want to be on this. And when you get yourself perfectly aligned, the idea was to then try to memorize what that body position was. So on the front of this thing, there were like little platforms to put your feet underneath, okay, as you're sitting on this thing. But you could still, your butt could still come off the back of it and that's not good. So in order to keep your butt on the toilet seat, we had these two little arms that would press you into the seat. Actually, to help myself get the right position, as I put my arms up like this, like I was riding a chopper, I thought of Peter Fonda in a movie called Easy Rider. That was a good alignment for me. After you take care of your business, 
we had a couple things to, to watch out for. We had a mirror that we would be trained to then take from, it was Velcro to the wall. We would take this mirror and then put it behind us. So as we got off the toilet, we saw if anything was following us, if you get, get what I mean, okay? And if there was something following you, you would sit back down and do whatever you think was necessary to make sure whatever was following you off the seat remained where it was supposed to. You do a little shake if you need to. And then if things get really out of control, we have uh, disinfectant wipes just to make sure we clean up here. The number one stuff can sort of go all over the place if you don't aim correctly. The poop remained in the toilet. We landed with all of our poop. And then the toilet was serviced once we got on the ground. And on occasion, people had messed up the procedure and therefore broken the toilet. And that's really bad. If you break the toilet and you can't poop in the toilet on a space shuttle, the backup to that was what we called Apollo bags that had adhesive that you would tape to your butt. That's the way they pooped in Apollo. They did not have a regular toilet to use, and that seemed extremely unpleasant, right? So we did not want to get into the Apollo bags. And so that was kind of like enough to scare you. You would make sure you did the procedure correctly. On Earth, cleanliness is very important. What most of us do is we'll take a shower every day, brush your teeth, very important to brush your teeth, brush your hair, we need to shave. But in space, it's a little different. Water is uh, somewhat of a resource, particularly on the space station, and so we want to conserve what we have, and a big shower would use, use lots of water, so we really can't afford to do that. So what we did in space, and what, what the astronauts still do in space, is you take more of a sponge bath, where you have one washcloth that you would put a little water on, and then you could put some soap into it, and then soap yourself off. This is our body wash. So there's soap inside of here. We would fill this just like a drink bag, has a valve at the top, and we could squeeze the liquid soap out of it after we added water to it. And then you would hang all of those things up to dry. The ventilation system, the circulation of air, will allow it to dry. In space, space is a problem. So the washcloths we use were packed very tightly. On the space station now, they have ones that look like, almost like a hockey puck with NASA on them. They're, the washcloths were kind of cool. But you want to pack them as tightly as you can. And the towels, we have these big fluffy towels you can get on Earth. That's not happening in space. They're generally uh, thinner towels, but pretty absorbent. So they work really well. The use of water is so important for our life, having clean water. In a lot of places, don't have a clean water source, right? So we have this problem in space where we need to have water to live for drinking, for hygiene, and for preparing food, because a lot of our food items are dehydrated, so you add a little bit of water to those. And so we've done a good job of learning how to effectively recycle water uh, and be able to clean urine and, and water we use for different things so that it's usable again. Uh, and so that is the type of technology that can be very useful in, in parts of the world where getting clean water is, a, is an issue. Washing our hair usually requires a lot of water on Earth, but in space, we use rinseless shampoo. So here it is right there. It's got Velcro on it. If I wanted to put it down, I could stick it to the wall. And it's got a piece of Kapton tape on the top so it won't leak. Kapton tape is space-approved tape. So what I did was add a little bit of water to a washcloth, then, and then rinse the shampoo, and then get a good lather going, and then again take a, a towel and then just dry off my hair with a towel. And it worked great, because you didn't have to rinse your hair that way. You generally used your own uh, washcloth and towel. That was somewhat of a personal item. Shaving the way I shave on Earth, I use shaving cream and a, and a razor on the sink, and that requires running water. You can do that in space, and they do have a special uh, shaving cream you can use. They call it Astro Edge, and you can also use a razor, but then you've got to do something with the cream and the whiskers that are coming off. What I opted for uh, was an electric razor, and the whiskers were contained in the unit itself, and then you would clean it if you needed to very carefully with a vacuum. We generally get a haircut pretty close to the time that we're going to fly in space. But on the space station, you're up there for six months. And so you need to be concerned about a haircut. And so for that, they have an electric clipper, again, that's attached directly to a vacuum hose. So that as you create 
hair, it'll get sucked right into the vacuum. Stuff like dead skin, uh, cutting your, your fingernails or toenails, you want to do that stuff near the vent so that it gets captured by the vent and then you can clean it off. This was a toothbrush that I took with me to space. NASA could provide you with this, the standard government issue toothbrush, but if you provided one of your own, they would pack it for you and, and, and fly it and you could use that in space if you had a favorite toothbrush. So I saw this as an opportunity to do something fun. So I went out and purchased this astronaut toothbrush to have in space. And NASA then converted it to a space toothbrush by putting a piece of Velcro on it. In space, you brush your teeth the same way, more or less. You use toothbrush and toothpaste, and then you rinse your mouth. But then the question is, what do you do with that stuff? And there are two options. You can either be a spitter or a swallower. If you're a spitter, I felt that was a little more complicated because you have to, you know, spit into a washcloth and deal with it. So what I do is I just swallow the toothpaste. Space sounds glamorous, doesn't it? I wear contact lenses. I even spacewalk with my contact lenses. Some guys didn't want to do that, but I always wore them. I figured, you know, as long as I wasn't messing with my eyes, I'd be okay. There was a concern, though, with the docs about us uh, having clean hands when we put the, the contacts in, and so we had wipes that I guess you can use on Earth as well if you were concerned. I did not lose a contact in space. I felt very fortunate that didn't happen. To do laundry on Earth is fairly straightforward, I and mean, we have machines that help us, but in space, it's different. Because we don't have a lot of water in space, it is hard to wash clothes. On the space shuttle, we had a, a different shirt every day, and we had a different pair of underwear every day, and we had pants and shorts that would be worn for a few days. And so we didn't do laundry. We just packed that stuff up once we wore the shirt and we put it in a in kind of a clothing bin, but it was like a big bag, and then that stuff would be returned to Earth and then cleaned and returned to us clean. On the space station, they kind of rely on the supply ships to bring them the new clothes. The dirty laundry will get packaged, put into a supply ship that has been emptied of supplies and now becomes a dumpster, and that stuff will burn up on re-entry. It does, however, on occasion get stinky in space. What you smell in space in the cabin is generally each other. When we landed on the shuttle, after this situation for a few weeks, the people that would open up the hatch would get a whiff of this and be like, <laughs> was usually the reaction. The more experienced recovery technicians would know that ahead of time and be prepared for it. You go through your spacesuit to spacewalk, that becomes your individual spacecraft. It does not come with its own toilet. The rule was, on spacewalking days, the two people going out to spacewalk have first dibs on the toilet. You want to take care of that as best you can before you go out, and then you put your diaper on, to make it astronaut proof, some nice person who packs our stuff writes front on the diaper so we don't put it on backwards. And then we put our fancy cooling garment on and then we start getting dressed with the rest of the space suit on. Once you're locked inside of there, you have no access to the toilet any longer. So if you're gonna go, you're gonna do it in the, in the diaper and you're really discouraged from pooping in that thing because you really don't want that stuff getting loose in there and the diaper should work, but why take the risk? When we were launching on the space shuttle, we were gonna be putting a, a diaper on as well uh, when we got dressed. So you'd wanna use the bathroom at crew quarters and then you'd put on your space suit with a diaper and you'd go out to the launch pad. Now, on the launch pad itself, there is a toilet. We call it the last toilet on Earth because you use it and then you go to space. The last thing you do before you go flying or go into a simulator where you're gonna be stuck is you go to the bathroom. It's part of the checklist. We do have a thermal control, so you try to keep yourself cool while you're spacewalking so you don't sweat profusely. But still, you're going to be moving around and you're going to be sweating a bit. One thing you learn in aviation, as you go to different altitudes, things are going to expand, meaning your stomach. I remember the, the, uh, it was a Navy guy that was training us in this, and he said, your social graces go out the window when you get inside of the airplane. You know, you might have some extra gas. So he said, you don't worry about that. You because you don't want to get a stomach ache. And so the same thing is in your spacesuit, but 
if you break wind inside of your spacesuit, you're the only guy that's going to be smelling it. And uh, you will smell it. I think for the future, hygiene, of course, is going to be important. On the space shuttle, it was a short-term issue. You know, you could contain all the poop for a couple of weeks. On the space station now, they have a better plan because you're up there longer periods of time. But still, the proximity to the Earth gives you some advantages. You can get resupplied of clothing. You can get resupplied of water. You can get resupplied of a lot of the things you need because we're in low Earth orbit. Once we start moving further away from the planet, it's going to be harder to do that and resupply is not going to be as easy as it is now. So I think we are going to need a way to wash clothes when we go further away from our planet, and we're going to need a way to do that that doesn't require a lot of water. Also, we're able to um, contain a lot of the, um, the germs of bacteria. We try to go to space very healthy, have a quarantine period ahead of time, so you don't have that. We have just about every medicine imaginable available to us hygiene-wise, but eventually as we get further and further away, that may be more of an issue as well of containing some of the, the contaminants, bacteria. If you're very far away from Earth, you're going to have to solve that problem on your own. So I think dealing with germs, um, cleanliness, and resupply are going to be a bigger issue as we go forward where you're going to need to take all your toothpaste with you or figure out a way to make it or something. So we're going to have to think about these issues as we move forward.